This is BYU Sports Nation, brought to you by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now, from Studio B, here's Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. BYU Sports Nation is live on a Monday. Your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. October 25th, wherever and however you're connected, Great to have you with us. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up alongside a man who is currently checking the updated Pac-12 standings, Jerem Jordan. I have them. Here they are. Uh, let's keep this joke going. BYU at the top of the Pac-12 uh, standings. We're just going overall Pac-12 here. We're not going Pac-12 South even. 4-0, as you can see on the screen, 6-2. and The uh, one of two teams ranked in the Pac-12. There's, there's one Pac-12 team ranked. Are you kidding me? Um, the only undefeated team so far. One game left with USC. Uh, so BYU going for that Pac-12 South title, which is very exciting. We do know the tiebreakers. We are preparing for a banner, potentially, or shirts or something, right? Uh, this is very exciting. <laughs> four, four numbers to Pac-12. Listen, the one game against future homie in the Big 12, BYU just, it wasn't a game, right? It was like, okay, two years to prep for that one. The Pac-12? Oh, breezy. <laughs> breezy. How wild is it that USC is at the bottom of that standing right there. That is, that's crazy. But not necessarily out of it, right? Well, like it, the way the yeah. Pac-12 is? Uh, no, they're out of it. You're right. You're right. They're out of it. Everybody's Washington, still kind of in it. Washington stinks. Man, USC oh, man. stinks. Man, crazy. <laughs> Stanford stinks. Speaking of uh, the new Big 12, five teams in the new Big 12 are currently ranked in the AP Top 25. Mm-hmm. And the best of those is a newbie. How about that? Cincy. How about that? Here's your first place show lineup on a Monday, Jerem. BYU football has made history. Four Power 5 wins in the same season for the first time ever with a win over Washington State. So why does it feel like some across Cougar Nation are frustrated? ESPN's Trevor Maddish discusses why a close game on the Palouse is what he expected and where BYU needs to get better moving forward to the Bronco Bowl, when they host Virginia this Saturday night. Plus the latest on Zach Wilson's injury against the Patriots. How much time will he miss? And TJ Haas back in the United States hooping with some magic. Bring on today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. BYU beats Washington State in the Battle of the Cougars 21-19 thanks to a monster game from Tyler Algier. More on that in a moment. Wide receiver Neil Pau says BYU got its groove back. Just gets our mojo back. Um, you know, obviously losing two in a row. Um, and, you know, however those two losses went, but it just gets our groove back, gets us to know that we can play, we can win, and our sights on ten. You know, possibly ten wins is still uh, in front of us, and that we can do it. Yes, you can. In fact, eleven is possible. BYU is now six and two, four and over Pac-12. As we mentioned, the Cougars jump back into the top twenty-five and number twenty-five. Play the Bronco Bowl Saturday night against Virginia. BYU sophomore running back Tyler Algier named College Sports Madness Independent Player of the Week after a 191-yard performance on 32 carries with two touchdowns, which brings us to our stat of the day. It's the BYU Sports Nation stat of the day. Tyler Algier accumulated the most rushing yards against a Power 5 team by any BYU running back in the history of the program with those 191. Taysom Hill Wild. holds the record, but of course, he did it as a quarterback against Texas. Arguably, he was just a running back that game, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> Algier, 191 yards. Fantastic stuff. Second time he's received the award this season. He also surpassed 2,000 career rushing yards in the win against Washington State. And he's done it on the fewest carries of any back at BYU, too. 316 total carries to get over 2,000 yards. That's pretty impressive, man. That's, you think about all the great running backs here. Adam Schefter of ESPN reports Zach Wilson sprained his PCL in his knee. He's out two to four weeks. Best of luck to Zach getting back to uh, full strength. Other notable performances from the Cougars in the NFL include Fred Warner with nine tackles in a deluge of rain in San Francisco last night. Had a fumble recovery in San Francisco's loss to the Colts. Dax Milne had two catches for 16 yards against the Green Bay Packers for the Washington football team. Jamal Williams, 12 carries, 57 yards in a loss to the Los Angeles Rams. Number eight women's volleyball dominated number 21 San Diego. The 32-point win sweep Friday. Amazing. Just crazy. Led by Kenzie Kerber at 17 kills. 
Uh, after the game, Heather Olmstead running by the interview with Keek Solano said, So good! Cougars are 9 0 in conference play. So good! Have won 13 in a row. Wow. BYU hosts San Francisco and Santa Clara Thursday and Saturday, both on BYU TV and the app. And by the way, Bronco Mendenhall is talking right now to the uh, press. He just said, BYU is near and dear to my heart. It's an amazing experience to now be able to return. Wow. We know that. We know that. The emotions are going to be very, very strong on Saturday night. Oh, man. Cannot and, and wait. And it's not just Bronco. There's like eight dudes on the staff that we're homies with that will be back in the house. Cannot wait. Yeah. TJ Haas drafted 15th overall in the G League draft by the Orlando Magic affiliate, the Lakeland Magic. Season begins November 5th. Good to have TJ back in the States. That's awesome, man. Love that. Uh, did we mention women's soccer? Oh, that's right. 12th ranked BYU women's soccer beats LMU 2-0. Only remaining undefeated team in the West Coast Conference at 6-0 because Pepperdine blew it last week with a loss in the tie. And Santa Clara lost to Portland 2-0 Saturday. So we'll talk about that coming up. In six conference games, the Cougars have now scored 30 goals, allowed only three. BYU will take on the reigning national champs and the rival in the West Coast Conference, Santa Clara, Saturday afternoon for Eastern. You can listen to that on uh, BYU Radio 107.9 and BYU Cougars. Massive game coming up Saturday. In the driver's seat. Yep. Because yep. Pepperdine plus three forgot place. what they were doing all season. They were number three in the country. And Santa Clara did too. Let's go. Holy cow. All right, some other Cougars playing hoops overseas. Jake Toulson, five points, four rebounds, and an assist in a six-point win yesterday for his team. Eric Mika and Charles Abua played against each other on Saturday. Fantastic. Awesome. Mika had 12 points. Abua had 17 with eight rebounds. How about the picture right there, courtesy of at Charles underscore Abuo. Great to see those former BYU Cougars teaming up across the pond in international hoops. I think Charles Abuo was taken on Twitter. But, uh, yeah, but both, <laughs> like you, someone took just someone straight took up. at Spencer Linton, uh, so both I had to looking, the underscore. Both looking jack, by the way. Yes. Yeah. And Eric and his uh, wife, Gabby, recently had a baby, too. That's exciting. Very nice. Yeah, busy awesome. time. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. A victory on the Palouse. BYU beats Washington State 21-19. The Cougars, as we chronicled, are 4-0 and against Pac-12 teams this season. They will finish, regardless of what happens against Virginia and USC, with a winning record against their seven Power 5 opponents it. this season. Did it. They have done what well, historically has not happened. Already. Right. They're bowl eligible. No, amazing. Eight games into the season, Incredible. having played... Five power fives already. Three port, we're coming for you. Okay. Now, there was a very interesting scenario going into the Washington State game with the other Cougars having lost their head coach, Nick Rolovich, and four assistants. Yet, BYU was still only a four point favorite when the game kicked off. They won by two. Jerem, BYU, they get the win. It's great. They made history. Is it more about the means of the game, or is it just the fact that they just won? It's about the end. The means matter, but the end matters the most. So I'm happy BYU won, and let's talk. So should BYU have won this game by more than two? Yeah. Uh, Nick Rolovich isn't there. Four assists aren't there. BYU should have won this game by more. But I'm happy they won, because welcome to Power 5 scheduling, okay? Welcome to it. Oh, why is this kid different? BYU is 6 2 and ranked 25th. This is an incredible season right now, given how many Power Fives BYU has played. Five. Crazy. It's going to get a little easier after Saturday. In the Big 12, when BYU's in it, there are going to be games where that'll be anti whack 80s. Okay? This isn't tight end. We're throwing 400 and BYU winning by 30 over New Mexico. Okay? That era is long gone. We are now in the era of just win the freaking game. That's the era we're in. Okay? BYU has done it to the tune of 6-2. and two. Yes, BYU should have won this by more. BYU had to give Tyler Algier the ball 32 times. Um, Puka However, Nakua. it needs to happen. Jaron Hall outcaught Puka Nakua. Jaron Hall had a catch. Puka Nakua didn't. There are weird means to this. Yes, the means probably could have been different. But, but, when BYU's in the Big 12, it's going to play games that are dirty, weird, messy, not as clean as you wanted. And if BYU wins... That's what matters, baby. There will be days where BYU plays super well and overcomes. Listen, this team's and a bigger topic, Spence. BYU six and two. I think BYU's probably like a four and four type team that has overcome that record by taking care of the ball and being able to run the ball effectively in most games. Without those things, 
BYU's probably like a four and four squad. Okay, so my question is, if they are a four and four squad and have overcome some things, should they have won the game by more than two? I mean, they were only a four point favorite going in, and the emotions were high in Pullman. I kind of anticipated that's how the game would start. One, one more uh, touchdown is all I'm asking for. Okay. Yeah, I'm not saying BYU should have won by seventeen plus. I'm saying, eh, I think a two score win would have been merited given. I well, we need to be careful. Are we putting BYU, and I'm not, at the 5-0 and ranked 10th standard? That's not if the you team are, that then BYU is. you can expect is. a two-score two win. That's what I'm saying. Right, if you are. I am not. But that's not the team BYU is. That was the highest BYU would be. So I guess I would say I would counteract what you've been saying with, hey, maybe this is exactly what needed to happen because yeah, of the attrition. And I'm not saying it's me. I'm saying the thought out there that BYU should have blown this team out. I don't think they should have blown them out. I just think BYU should have won by... Eight plus nine or okay. something. Okay. Yeah. So one more I, drive. I yeah. present this. Oh, good. James Empey leaves the game at halftime. You're starting center. Harris Lachance is already out. Gunnar Romney has to leave the game early. Keenan Ellis has been out since Arizona, and he, according to the coaches, is the best cornerback and pass defender that BYU has. Keenan Peely out. Lorenzo Fawatea is still out. Caden Hawes out. I'm looking at all these guys not available for BYU, and that's why I feel so strongly that just win the game. I don't care if it's super ugly, if it's super lucky, just win the game because BYU has so many of their starters missing. And that's why it yeah, it's, sure. imp- it's impressive. So yeah. one point win, four point win, I don't care. I didn't say I wasn't happy. Sure. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm ecstatic. I'm not, I'm not questioning BYU that. Yeah, I'm just yeah. saying the two point win, it cut. For me, with all of those guys out and everything that's been going on around the program, coming off two straight losses. I kind of anticipated it would be a close, weird, at times, I, ugly game. Well, and I'm not even thinking about BYU. I'm just thinking about they don't have a head coach and four assistants. Right, but, like, the, but BYU just, hasn't won those games in the past, right? As we chronicled, they hadn't won them. They lost to Washington. They lost to Missouri. Yeah. They and, won this and time. And Washington uh, in 2013. But yeah, Washington State. Yeah, it's an interesting thing. But again... Get used to games like this where it the means weren't what you wanted. You're you're like used to some standard that isn't existent now. Like BYU has been has done a really good job of getting to six and two. I'm telling you, if BYU has only won when it won the turnover margin. If BYU is minus one in a couple of those games, we're staring at like a four and four team. BYU could if if that had gone really bad, BYU would be three and five. BYU could be three and five, four and four, five and three very easily. But BYU has taken care of the ball to its credit. BYU has been able to run the ball in all but two games, the two losses, to its credit. And sometimes you don't have it. Sometimes you cough it up, Boise State. Sometimes the other team's just better, Baylor. It took four and turnovers BYU's to lose won. to that Boise State team. Right. The three were notable. The fourth was whatever. The fact that BYU is six to two and ranked is incredible. Is incredible. I know the defense has issues, missed tackles, blah, blah, blah. Do they? BYU gave up 19 points. <laughs> exactly. What? How picky are we? Like, Robbie Bosco's not walking through that door. Rob Morris is not walking through that. You know what I mean? Like, this team is figuring out ways to win, to their credit. To their credit. How many fans before the season started said, just win six games and get to a bowl game? I just started, win six and get to a bowl game. I started my expectation preseason at seven, hoping for eight. That was adjusted later to expect eight, hope for nine. Okay, well, I'm going to present now to you now. Now it's nine yes, for ten. BYU is going to, at worst, at worst, win eight games in the regular season. Well, yeah, Idaho State and Georgia Southern. Exactly. That, that, that's, at yeah. worst, they're, they're going to get to eight. I'm hoping for nine or ten. It feels like yeah. nine... Yeah, is probably the number right now. Beat but, Virginia or USC, and you're at nine. But yeah. if BYU wins double digit games in the, if they get to ten without needing a bowl game, that'd be amazing. Then BYU is a top fifteen team going into whatever bowl game they're playing in, whether yeah. it's the Independence Bowl, the Guaranteed Rate Bowl. You know, I know some other fans, myself included, are hoping for maybe an ESPN slide into a bigger game if BYU is in the top fifteen. Bigger game 20. meaning different matchup. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, r- guaranteed rate bowl is a good game. That's big, big ten or big twelve. You would take that, right? You should play. I'd another take that of right now. Future Big Twelve homies in the game. I'd take that bowl. right now. Yeah, I. Yeah. You want an eighth Power Five? I want twelve. <laughs> you all know this. You always got a winning record this season against the Power Five. They did it, man. They overcame history. Our question of the day: BYU gets the win over Washington State. Do you really care how they got the victory? 
Let's go to Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. First response in from at Hall G underscore love on Twitter. Style points don't matter at this point. Take the win and move forward. Ask Oklahoma about that, Jerem. Kansas was up late. In that game. Ask Oklahoma Kansas. about style points this yeah. season, which they traditionally are known for. They've won ugly, but they're still undefeated, and that's all that matters. Yeah. This response continues. BYU has consistent weaknesses that need to be addressed and improved sure. if they want to continue picking up wins. I really want this team to reach its potential. What is the potential? Is the potential like 10-plus wins. 11 wins with a bowl game victory? BYU would, BYU would finally do it with like a regular, normal, kind of fleshed-out schedule, right? Not year one. BYU's been a single-digit win team outside of year one and COVID, right? This would be sort of the toughest challenge of a decade of independence, and they're right now they're crushing it. They're crushing it, meaning winning six uh, of those games. Coming up, the newest uniform combo for the Cougars against Virginia, the Virgil. And ESPN's Trevor Maddich discusses the means of BYU's victory over Washington State. Where do the Cougars in blue need to get better right now if they want to beat Bronco in Virginia? This is BYU Sports Nation. Bronco, you dog. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Today on Coordinator's Corner, Defensive Coordinator Elias Tuiaki, Special Teams Coordinator Ed Lamb joined the program to recap the Washington State win, preview the Bronco Bowl with Virginia, catch it right after us on the BYU TV app in one Eastern. We are live with your day-to-day BYU sports play-by-play in Studio B. I'm Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan. It is our pleasure, as we do every Monday during the college football season, to welcome in our friend and ESPN college football insider, analyst Trevor Maddich. He is a national champion. Trevor, welcome back to the program. How was your weekend? My weekend was great. It was a, a weekend of college football that featured no ranked on ranked matchups. So it seemed like it was going to be a little boring, but there was such unbelievable drama and at least one massive upset. So college football always delivers. Yes, indeed. The season of chaos continues. The BYU Cougars back on track after a hard-fought 21-19 win up on the Palouse against Washington State. Tyler Algier puts together a performance that no other BYU running back has in the history of the program against a Power 5 school, 191 yards. What would you think of Tyler Algier's performance? Watching Washington State try to tackle him was like watching a swarm of children trying to drag down a building. He was (laughs) epic in this game. And everybody knew he was going to get the ball because everybody knew that Coach Sataki had challenged his team to be more physical after those two losses where they kind of got pushed around at the line of scrimmage is the Washington state expected that they lined up to stop it. And even on that final drive where BYU ran out the clock in the last four minutes, when they had eight and nine guys up at the line, they still couldn't stop it. It was sheer determination and grit by that offensive line, that young offensive line, by the way, and Tyler Algier. Third and seven, and BYU still hands the ball off to Tyler Algier. That's how confident they were that he could get that first down, which is gnarly. 191 yards is the most by a BYU running back against Power 5 team in BYU history, which is crazy. 32 carries. I mean, this was an all-time performance by Tyler Algier. How has he evolved as a player this year, Trevor? And do you feel like, because we're hearing he'll be an NFL draft pick? Oh, he'll be an NFL draft pick. And he should be in in national honors conversations as well. This is kind of the year of the running back in college football. I mean, you've got guys playing at the highest level in places like Ohio State, Texas, Alabama, Michigan State, Syracuse. I mean, it goes on and on. And Algier is one of those guys on that top tier. And the thing about him that you expect being a big former linebacker is that he's a powerful guy. And we see him run over guys, run through guys. Okay, we get that. But most backs that are that powerful and that big aren't terribly threatening to be a, a long run because, okay, if he breaks through, breaks a tackle, someone's going to chase him down and it won't be that big a deal. He's, he has shown elite speed for a big back as well. And that is something that really has been a, an important thing for BYU because the big plays are not just coming – from the passing game. Big plays are coming from Tyler Algier running between the tackles, breaking a tackle, breaking another tackle, making a safety miss, and then off to the races. And that is something 
that he adds to this team that you just can't quantify and you don't really want to count on it heading into the season. But now it is one of the most important features of this offense. ESPN's Trevor Maddich is with us on BYU Sports Nation. You just mentioned how much BYU is running the ball and hard not to when you have a beast like Tyler Algier. However, not surprisingly, the receivers, they want the ball more. Trevor, in your opinion, does BYU need to pass the ball more? They will because they will run up against defenses that will be able to stack up against the run. Good defenses will be able to take away something. And you have to have the versatility to go to plan B. I mean, that's what happened at Baylor. When they took away the running rushing attack, the passing attack wasn't able to pick up enough of the slack. Uh, I'm not saying they took away, but they limited the rushing attack. And this is what will happen against better defenses. And so the, the passing attack right now is complementary to the rushing attack, but they will need to be able to make those big plays. Unfortunately, guys like Puka Nakua and Gunnar Romney have been phenomenal down the field. And Jaron Hall, the thing about Jaron Hall is, is he doesn't have a lot of yards because they have been relying so much on the pass. But there's a rating called QBR. That's quarterback rating that is not just a passer rating. It rates everything about a quarterback, passing, running, decision-making, when he makes a big play, not just if he makes a big play. When he makes a big mistake, not just if. He makes a big mistake. And right now, Jaron Hall is 11th in the nation in total QBR. It goes from 100 is perfect, zero, or, you know, zero is obviously zero. 50 is average. And Jaron Hall is 79.5, almost 80 on a scale of zero to 100 in total QBR, one of the best in the nation. So even though they're not getting a lot of passing yards, their passing game has been quite effective. And it seems to me that if they do need it, they will be able to, to generate. There's an interesting conversation among some Cougar fans about the following. Hey, why was this game so close? Washington State had lost Nick Rolovich and four assistants. Uh, what the heck? To, I, I agree a little bit with that, but then I also think, welcome to Power 5 football. It's going to be a dogfight more often than you think. This isn't the 80s, right? This isn't the whack. This is a tougher sl- uh, slog for this BYU football team. You're going to have to win some games messy, and it's not, it's not going to be a 300-yard passing day every time. What's your opinion on sort of the week-to-week challenge of what BYU has stacked up this year, which is seven power fives, and now they've played five of them? Right, and that's took, taken a toll on their team physically, and they've been able to hold up better than I've ever seen a BYU team hold up against this kind of a schedule from a standpoint of of their physicality and their depth. You're right about Washington State because people just look at what happened with their coaching staff, but they tend to forget that Washington State had won three consecutive Pac-12 games heading into this game against BYU. They were on a roll. And the way they came out was the way you need to come out as a team that just had the coaching staff decimated. That is, guys got together and they took ownership of their team. They took ownership of this game. And so the Washington State Cougars were were not in disarray. They came out angry. They came out focused and together. And BYU had to beat a very capable team there. But it does expose something that BYU needs to fix. And that is the offense will disappear from time to time. I mean, after their initial touchdown, they turned it over on downs. They missed a field goal. They had a three and out, you know, they, they, they just disappeared for the rest of the first half, basically. And then in the second half, they took over Algier took over. I mean, 190 some yards and over a hundred of those were in the second half. The majority were in the second half. And so they need to, to be a bit more consistent because the defense did a, a masterful job of keeping them in the game while the offense was struggling at times in the first half. And they don't need to want to – they don't want to have to, let's put it that way, count on that to happen because the offense needs to be a bit more consistent drive to drive. Trevor, there were some concerns brought up on the defensive side of the ball specifically for BYU with tackling and at least missed angles, missed tackles, especially in the first half. But the Cougars surrender only 19 points to Washington State. And – In all six of their wins, it's been largely the defense limiting the offenses that they have seen, and they've seen some good ones. What do you think of the BYU defense and their performance right now? What are they doing well, and where do they need to get better? Well, they're doing well. Well, in this game, they did much better in stopping the run. What they need to do better is get after the passer without having to blitz. Because, again, there will come a time when they're facing an outstanding passer who will be able to to burn the blitz and create big plays 
against man coverage behind the blitz. And if you don't blitz, if you can't get to him, then he's got all day to pick apart that coverage, even though there's extra guys back there. And so that's one thing they need to get better at. The one of the things they've done so well, though, is in situational football, key third downs, key moments when they get a, a takeaway. They've made the plays they need to make most of this season. That shows disciplined football. It's smart football. It's a coaching staff that is able to anticipate what the offense is going to do and put their guys in position to take advantage. Ben Bywater has been really outstanding in place of Keenan Peely at linebacker. And, you know, you replace a guy like Peely with a, with a young kid like Bywater, and you worry about it sometimes. And while he's had his growing pains, Bywater, by and large, I think has been really a revelation. He's been fantastic. I think ultimately what they need to do, though, is just keep getting healthier, keep developing that depth, and then get after the passer without blitzing. Because Virginia brings in Brennan Armstrong. Brennan Armstrong leads the nation in passing right now. He's the only Power 5 quarterback with over 3,000 yards. Think about that. He's on pace for between five and 6,000 yards <laughs> passing. And so you don't want to give him time to throw, but you also don't want to deplete the secondary by bringing guys out to blitz. He has more passing yards than BYU has yards. How about that? Which is just insane. Wow. So let's talk about Virginia. The Bronco Bowl. In comes Bronco Mendenhall, Robert and I, Mark Atuaya, Garrett Tuja, all these guys. It's going to be fun to have them back. Granted, they'll be on the wrong sideline. Weird, awkward, great, <laughs> awesome, all of these adjectives, I think, describe how we're all feeling. Uh, awkward's probably the most for Bronco Mendenhall coming back, knowing how he is. It should be fun, but it also is a bigger game than I think we thought before the season. Virginia's 6-2. and two. They've got this amazing offense like you've talked about. They won two games because uh, two teams missed field goals. Miami and Louisville missed field goals late. They could be 4-4 and four very easily. BYU could be 4-4 four and four too if they don't take care of the ball the first couple weeks. What do you think of this matchup between these two six and two squads? I think this is a, a great matchup. It should be a very entertaining game. And for BYU's sake, it needs to be a low scoring game because when Virginia's offense is, is on, they're putting on between 40 and 50 points per game. Their defense has been giving up a lot, but two weeks ago they shut out Duke. So I'm not sure exactly how that happened, but uh, they have been giving up more points and more yards on defense, especially on the ground. Virginia's given up almost 200 yards rushing per game on average this year. And that's where BYU needs to take Tyler Algier and get him absolutely fresh and healthy. They need to get him massages all day long. He needs to be doing his, his homework and his, his classwork, you know, getting massages, getting cold treatment, heat treatment, whatever it takes, because they will need him to be the best defense that they can have. You don't want your defenders to be out there for too many plays against this Virginia offense, because eventually they'll bust some big plays. But if, the, the BYU offense is able to grind out long drives and finish with touchdowns, then they'll put themselves in a position to win this thing. They just cannot afford for this to turn into a, a, a track meet. BYU football back in the AP Top 25, right at number 25, Trevor, which begs the question, if the Cougars beat Virginia, you would think that they will handle – Idaho State, don't sleep on Idaho State, I know. Sleep on them. Georgia don't Southern. Don't sleep on them, yeah. Okay, but if BYU wins the next three games and let's say they're 9-2 and two going into USC, where are they in the polls given all of the chaos that's happened? What's the ceiling for this team if BYU runs the table the rest of the way in the regular season? Well, they need help, but some of the teams above them have some pretty tough games as well. And so, I mean, to be into the top 20, possibly even top 15 is a possibility if they if they do win out again winning out you got to get past virginia to start with and that's going to be tough you mentioned usc at the end of the season coming into the year usc was picked by a lot of people to win the pac-12 south certainly to compete for it with arizona state and utah and because of their coaching situation and other things they've kind of uh they've struggled it's possible that usc players might just check out by the time they get to the end of the season, we'll see. We don't know. They could rise up when they get to the end of the season to impress the next coach. So that's something else we don't know. But from a big picture standpoint, the ceiling for this team still is to be as to finish the season ranked. And that's important from a recruiting standpoint. It's also important to be ranked ahead of Utah at the end of the season, because memories of recruits tend to tend to be a lot less um, long than their parents are. Right. And so you want they want to play on teams that are ranked. They want to play on teams that have a chance to win championships. And any recruits coming in now are going to have a chance to win Big 12 championships as they become upperclassmen. And so these are things that are important relative to the way BYU is ranked. Now, once again, 
the players and coaches are thinking about one thing and one thing only, and that's Virginia. But from a fan standpoint, it's okay to look at what they might be able to still accomplish this year. Zach Wilson, uh, out two to four weeks with the PCL strain. What are your thoughts on, uh, I guess, the injury to Zach and hopefully what he can get back to and uh, succeed after the injury? You know, he made some outstanding plays in this game. He made some throws that were vintage Zach Wilson throws. On the move, under pressure, just flicks it with his wrist almost and throws a laser into tight coverage and is caught. Uh, I think that this it's bad. You know, it's never it never helps you in your development to to miss time as a rookie quarterback. But at the same time, it'll allow him to take a step back and take a breath and watch everything now rather than have to be in the middle of everything. And sometimes that can help as well. Uh, and his team, I think, will get better while he's resting. That's another part of the problem is that just like Sam Darnold before him, Zach has had to force things a little bit, I think, in his own mind in order to win games that they fell behind pretty early on. And so we had to do things that were more risky than the game plan anticipated originally before the kickoff. So I think it'll be a good thing for him to be able to sit back and watch, let his teammates develop, and he'll have to make up for lost time, but I think he'll be able to do it. I just hope that this knee doesn't limit him going forward. I don't think it will based on what, how they've described the injury because so much of his game is his confidence in being able to move around and make guys miss and extend plays. And as long as he can maintain that, he'll be fine. Trevor, I cannot wait for this weekend of college football. Of course, BYU Virginia is lining up to be a fantastic game, but as you have mentioned, college football always delivers. Here's to more chaos, my friend. Go chaos. I love it. Look at you. Now I know what your Halloween costume is going to be. Whatever chaos looks like, that's what you're going to dress up. <laughs> yes, indeed. Thanks, Trevor. All right. ESPN's Trevor Maddich with us on BYU Sports Nation for another loaded edition of Maddich Monday. Always good. Coming up, the best Malik Moore joke that he asked for. And after 32 carries and 191 yards, how's Tyler Algier feeling on Monday morning? This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Visible Supply Chain Management. Have further review. Looks back at the win over Washington State. Previous matchup with Virginia. Dave McCann, Blaine Fowler, David Nix. Break it down. Have further review tomorrow night, live 7 Eastern on the BYU TV app and on demand app. He is Jerem Jordan. I am Spencer Linton, and this is BYU Sports Nation. To interact with the show and get content throughout your day, follow us on the five major social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Let's whip it! Cougar Whip Around presented by Visible Supply Chain Management tackling America's most challenging shipping problem. Define the unquantifiable. How sore do you think Tyler Algier is after 32 carries on Saturday? I'm going to say Tyler Algier is four ice baths worth of soreness. Four. That's a lot. <laughs> Woo. What a performance, right? That 32 carries, dude. Most in a game for a BYU player since 2016, Jamal Williams. Tyler probably feels like Taysom Hill felt after that performance against Houston in 2013. <laughs> 115 plays. Yeah. Just insane. Probably in that realm. That that was my favorite play, by the way, that we just showed. Tyler Algier diving into the, what, corner or safety? Yes. Just who's, like, done with the play, the, the but torpedo. just shoulders him. Whee! And then uh, goes heart to the camera. So much love. Just, again, another, just get out the way. Okay? One, it's one of my favorite images all year. Yeah. Tyler Algier just constantly either punching the ball out or shouldering <laughs> opponents. He's the Superman That's guy. what he does. He's the Superman! All right, Jerem, what's the more impressive stat? Tyler Algiers, 191 yards as most ever for a BYU running back against a Power 5 opponent, or four team wins against Power 5 opponents in the same season for the first time ever. Both very impressive before wins, sis. Utah's never started a season four now. <laughs> BYU just beat four Pac-12 teams yep. in the row. Um, awesome. No, that, that certainly significant. Obviously, you're not going to play for four Power Five teams in the pre-independence era very much, if at all. And so what BYU has done is pretty notable. And again, took care of the ball, was able to run the ball effectively enough. Um, in this game, it was awesome, right? Yeah, this is a notable thing in BYU history. Yes, uh, it's for me, absolutely, it's the four Power Five wins. And it's not that BYU is beating teams like Arizona in those four, right? Arizona's terrible. Right. BYU beat Utah. BYU beat Arizona State. Two of the best teams. And BYU in the just beat a Washington State team. I know they didn't have their head coach and four assistants. The rallying crowd was sent out. It was on the road. They had won three in a row. And they had won three yeah. power five games. Sure. They, 
Washington State had just beaten the same Oregon State team that beat Utah on Saturday night. We're in a world where we think an Oregon State win is a good one, which is crazy. Oregon State's 5-2. and two. Chad Johnson, they walked through that door in the 0-1 Fiesta, man. Thoughts on the Virgil-Uni combo against Virginia? Hey, whatever's going to give BYU the needed mojo to take care of business against Bronco and Virginia at home, I'm, I'm all about it. Cool video, Go. by the way, with Puka Nakua with the reveal here. Yeah, well produced by at BYU Football. Royal helmet, royal top, white pants. Classic look with a, a spin on the royal helmet. I, I like it. I think this is a great uniform combination. There's a million combinations. I love that BYU has become Oregon slash Boise State every week, which is awesome. It's just fun. I, it, the Virgil versus the Virginia. I think that's a fun uh, connection as well. We're big Virgil Carter fans here, so that's cool. You know what BYU needs to do to make the people that don't like the Navy helmet and the Navy uniform combinations this season feel better? They need to wear those uniforms against Idaho State and Georgia Southern. And then it's all good, right? Yes, because... Got, that, rid of the, got rid of the jinx. Then they'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> On to the NFL. Zach Wilson leaves the New York Jets blowout loss to the New England Patriots with a reported sprained PCL in his knee. Are you more concerned about this specific injury for Zach or that uh, he might come back and sustain more injuries? Uh, not concerned about the unknown potential injury. You can't live your life like that. I, I, well, if you want to, you can, but I just feel like it doesn't do anything. Um, this will be good for him to get healthy. An injury is bad no matter what, but get healthy and then kind of watch and realize what you can do a little bit better and then get in there. I'm just, I'm constantly sad for him because Jets. The Jets just suck and it's hard to watch. Hopefully he'll resurrect them like Josh Allen did the Bills. Yeah, I'm more concerned about what we know and that is a sprained PCL. I hope it's only two weeks. They said two to four. I hope it's only two weeks. I want Zach to continue to progress. What do the Jets play? Maybe it depends. As as rough as it's (laughs) going to be, the more experience he gets, the better. Like, right. Let's let him transition as quickly as possible. So I don't like that he's missing some games, but yes. I'm more concerned Jets about Jets Bengals game. this week, by the way. And then Jets Colts. Zach, that's stay a, away. That's a tough game. You and don't then want the Bengals this year. And then Bills and then Dolphins. So hopefully it's just three games. Yeah. Because <laughs> those are three harder games. After being the 15th pick in the G League draft by the Magic, is TJ Haas the next Penny Hart? No. Is TJ Haas the next P.O.A. Gurgi to play in the NBA? Ooh. Yeah, it's, it's so tough to make the G League route. I mean, look at Jimmer Fredette. He was a G League All-Star. He was the first pick in the G League draft. What do you draft. mean? He got a 10-day with He got a few 10-day contracts. Yeah, it's and the it's so tough. Ah, oh, man, I'm not going to put that high level of an expectation on TJ Haas right now. Yeah. I would love it, of course. But it's so tough to go that route. You, you got to do something special. You got to be on a team that has a ton of injuries. Maybe, but I don't. I don't think we should expect TJ to play in the NBA. I don't expect him to necessarily play in the NBA. If he does, that'd be incredible. But now he has an opportunity where he can be domestic and be pretty visible, which is great. Yep. After another winning weekend for BYU women's soccer, Jerem, and a losing weekend for Santa Clara and Pepperdine. How about that? Did the BYU women just? in a roundabout way, win the West Coast Conference title again? I mean, they control their own destiny. If BYU wins, so all BYU needs is, so Santa Clara, at Santa Clara, at Portland, home to Pepperdine. So two of those three are going to be ranked teams in the newest poll in Santa Clara and Pepperdine, okay? If BYU can get two wins and a tie, they're good. That's assuming that Pepperdine and Santa Clara both went out, okay? BYU is almost clear of Pepperdine, right? Which is crazy. So, yeah, BYU's done everything right in conference play. It's been incredible. This team's awesome. The Cougars might be a top 10 team by tomorrow when the new rankings come out. Let's go. Yeah, it it feels like they have because it doesn't... I don't don't expect them to lose. Uh, Right now, the way they're playing... You expect them to beat Santa Clara and Pepperdine. Well, at worst, a tie. Yeah, at worst, a tie. That's what I expect. Yes. Because they're playing so well right now. Yep, it's fun to watch, man. Coming up, prop pick results. Someone pulled out a broom. Uh... (laughs) <laughs> yes, indeed. Pulling a BYU women's volleyball. <laughs> also, who earns the rise and shout out this weekend? And Malik, more jokes. Let's get to him. What's the best one? This is BYU Sports Nation. He called for this. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. BYU football declines stock airs tomorrow night on the BYU TV app, 8.30 Eastern. Host Greg Rubel and the coach look back at the Washington State game ahead to the Bronco Bowl. Neil Pau is in the latest Deep Blue, and Tyler Algier will be in the film room. I'll ask him how sorry he is. Welcome back. 
8.30 Eastern. BYU Sports Nation live right now from Studio B. The Cougars victorious on the Palouse over Washington State. Malik Moore had his team leading third interception. And if you ask him, he should have had four and five. <laughs> but really, yes. it would have only been it, There was two more. on the same drive, the so same you drive. can't have two. You exactly. Have one. Yeah. Two more. He yeah. should have had four. Yeah. Uh, if you missed the interview with Malik Moore after the game. The I wish we had line. that video we could show you. Oh, wait. We do. The interview with Malik Moore, who has interviewed gold. Enjoy this. Malik, your team leading third interception today. Could have had a fourth, and I know you're going to play that in your mind again. Why was the defense overall successful today against a really talented passing offense at Washington State? Um, we was always running to the ball. It's pursuit drill, really. Um, everybody did they 111 once again, and then uh, when the ball was thrown, everybody was rallying to the tackles, and I think that was the most important thing was you know tackling and giving them as minimum yardage as possible. So. What changed mentally after a couple of losses? Because you got to break through a funk. How did you do that? Uh, it's practice harder. We had to change the energy up. The energy was way better this week in practice, and then we um, brought it to the game. So that's the most important thing was the energy and then um, our assignments and alignment. So Your interception proved that BYU won the turnover battle today. Let's walk through that play. What happened on that interception early in the first half? Uh, so he was – I knew they were going to try to hit the seams because that's just what – you know, a lot of that's a lot of weaknesses in some defenses. So, and some defenses. So, um, he ended up overthrowing the ball, and then I kept running, tracking the ball down, and uh, caught it. Now, your boys told me I had to ask you about the one you dropped. What happened on the dropped pick? Man, oh man! I think I was so worried about the well, the first drop. I like went like this, and it just came out of my hands. That was a drop, drop. Then the second one, I. Try to catch it, and I was worried about that end zone. I wasn't even looking at the ball no more. I just caught it and hit my helmet, bounced off. So I'm sorry, Cougar Nation. It's not going to happen again. Could have had four, but at least I got three. So it's all good. <laughs> the last time uh, I interviewed you on the road after a big one at Utah State, you told me you're going to get a pizza. Is this, is this like a game-by-game -game thing? Are you going to get another pizza tonight? I ain't feeling pizza. I'm feeling like some wing stop today. Some <laughs> wing stop. I need wing stop to sponsor me or something. <laughs> hey, if y'all watching this wing stop, please hit your boy up. I want it. I go there every time. And five. No, no, no. Five guys. Two. I go there every day. Ask your employees at Orem by the Cinemark Mall. I promise you. <laughs> Malik, before you go, uh, a sincere congratulations again. What has to happen for BYU to get better and get to win number seven against Virginia pushing forward? Man, energy. It's all about energy. Everybody is having fun, playing loose. Stop playing tight. Stop worrying about, you know, everything else going around you at home. When you're, at the when you're on the football field, you're on the football field. So uh, we got to bring the energy every week. So that's the most important thing. Malik Moore, your team leader in interceptions with three. Safe travels back to Provo. Thank you. Bye-bye. Name, Love image, it. likeness. Hit up your boy. <laughs> he has such a great personality. He's fun. If you can't tell. Uh, and that that's uh, not an uncommon thing whenever you talk to him, whether it's in front of a camera or not. He just got such good energy. Okay, and this adds to his personality. He tweets out following the game. All right, put your can't catch jokes down below. After today, not a word. <laughs> so get them all out now. Well, okay? trust me, they were flying without him. <laughs> I'll add one. Malik more, more like Malik less. I love Malik. I'm just playing. He's uh, great. I love that Pat Forty chimed in. BYU secondary has frying pans for hands out here dropping interceptions left and right. Oh, yikes. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, let's read some of these. At Jay Dabbling, I'm, ba I'm a balding 41-year-old sitting on my couch eating wings with a dad bod. I'm not saying a word. <laughs> Uh, That's funny. At Holyoke B, Malik announcing new name image like to deal with Nestle Butterfingers in spectacular fashion yes, today. Yes, yes. Well done. Uh, at uh, <laughs> GJ McClintock, one third is still a Hall of Fame batting average. It's true. One for three. Those are jokes. Career. Those are coming to his defense twice. At Cam Cam George 87, <laughs> I think you might be first on the top 10 and not top 10. Nice. JK, mate, keep up the good work. Uh, at Eric Jacobson 14. I mean, if you could catch, you'd be a receiver, right? <laughs> now, Malik told me last week on Monday in the film room, he said, I played receiver in high school, so I feel like I have hands. So that's why at Utah State, when he makes that acrobatic catch, he talked about how with his left hand, he would practice picking up the ball just like arm and yeah. finger strength. He's, he's got like, he should have had one of those two. Sure. Like, the th second one especially. Those were bad. The second like, one especially. Mal Malik's too good. At he's such a good player that we can pick on him. Because we expect him to make that play. Wasn't why like he had fourth string safety out there and we're like, who was that? Why didn't he catch it? No, Malik already had a pick in the game, so that helps you feel a little bit better about that. Which 
he got you know three extra yards if he doesn't kneel it. You know, this this one against Utah State is the second best play of the year. That's the second best play of the year. It's an incredible interception. The first is obvious. Malik Moore with three interceptions. And yes, should have been four. But like you said, my eyes got big. I was worried about the end zone. He's staring at the end zone before he caught the ball. Yes. That would have been BYU plus two in the game, by the way, yeah. which would have been good. Now, I can't remember. Did Washington State score in that drive or no? I don't remember. No. They had okay, to so punt. It was whatever. a third down when he dropped the second when he dropped opportunity, it. so they punted. Well, that's like on a Hail Mary or whatever. Or a fourth down where you like bat it down because you weren't gonna like run back right. those yards anyway. Where that's a smart play. Third down, maybe maybe it was a business decision. Uh, well, I no, love that Neil Pau said, "Look, it's just universal. Defensive backs can't catch. <laughs> <laughs> that's just mean. And linebackers can't run. Uh-oh. Not Tyler Algier. <laughs> coming back. Coming up. When we come back, today's rise and shout out. And Jerem continues his nice run in our prop pick results. I'm the Tyler Algier of prop picks. This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. On the latest Deep Blue podcast, I talk with women's soccer coach Jennifer Rockwood about getting into coaching, what still drives her, and winning. Listen to it on the BYU Radio app and where podcasts are found. BYU Sports Nation, always available on demand via the BYU TV and BYU Radio apps. It's time for our prop pick results, Jim. Yeah, baby. Things are going well for Mr. Jerem Jordan. Number one. Spoiler alert. What will be the difference in the BYU offense and defensive rush yards? Yeah. Okay, BYU rushed for 238, Washington State rushed for 93, a difference of 145 yards. I had plus 21, which was way too low. I had plus 41, which wasn't that much higher, but... But yeah, closer than BYU, I was. BYU question. Number two, Tyler J. were rushed for how many yards? I said 112, he said 87. He blew both of us away at 191. I just happened to be closer. I did feel strongly at the beginning of last week he would have 100 plus. I didn't think he'd have almost 200. I thought BYU would throw <laughs> the ball more. Only 20 attempts. Against the secondary that has been keen to giving up a lot of pass plays. 147 yards, four yards from Neil Pau to Jaron Hall. But 15 of 20 for Jaron, 75%. Efficient. Yeah. I like that part. I want more yards. All right, number three. Jaron Hall's longest pass will be how many yards? <laughs> and not that it matters, but to finish the picks, his longest pass, uh, well, we were overly optimistic. I had 51 yards. You said 49 <laughs> Longest pass was 21 yards. Find Puka! And it was his first pass attempt of the game. Wow. His longest pass was the first of the game. Find Puka. More Puka. All right. And Gunner. Again, Jerem, not Jaron. And Gunner, Gunner Romney got hurt, by the way. Hopefully he can play this week. Yeah, who got knows? Got rolled up on, on again, like Arizona. Yes, it looked like the same it play. It was like the same play. Same play. I'm guessing it was the same knee, right? <sighs> yeah. Hopefully he can recover as quickly as he did against Arizona. But there was, there was uh, you know, some sustained injury there and so hopefully he's available but maybe it's more Samson Nakua maybe some Keanu Hill Chris Jackson maybe those guys come in and how about Puka Nakua yeah, yeah. Just yeah. or just throw it to him throw it to Puka <laughs> alright you've uh, got a commanding two point lead for the season Jerem because everybody five games is, left it's like everybody's got one except for you you'll jump back in this quick you're good 3-1 eh, no big deal man we have let's see Five games left to cover, including the bowl game? Yeah. There's time. Yeah. There's always time. Oh. Yeah. I'm a second-half player in prop picks. That's what first-half <laughs> players that suck say. <laughs> hey, this is second-half team because they don't show up in the first half. <laughs> Our question of the day. BYU, yes, they get the win over Washington State. Do you care how they got it at this point? Caleb Hatch on Instagram says, it would have been nice to win comfortably. Yeah, always nice, but at the end of the day, a win is a win. The Boise State game was a great lesson that if you play ugly but win, then you take it for granted. Yeah. No, for sure. I love winning. It's the, my favorite thing. Okay. Our Elite Voice of the Day presented by Sundance Mountain Resort. Christopher West on Instagram says, to care about how BYU got it would be totally selfish. Mm-hmm. A win is a win. Yep. Never complain. I am so grateful BYU finally got back on track. Love it. Let's go. After two losses, yes. Mm-hmm. Just doesn't matter. Today's rise and shout outs presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Let's give one to Mark Pope, BYU Basketball, Midnight Madness. Uh, it looked awesome. We were both asleep, but yeah. We missed out on Chomburger because oh. he took everybody there 
and paid for them to eat dinner at Chomburger the, late. The, this is 2 a.m. <laughs> Friday night. That's crazy. I love Chomburger, by the way, speaking of NIL uh, for us. Uh, and women's volleyball, women's soccer taking care of business. They've been amazing. Yes. So fun to watch. Our thanks to today's guest, Trevor Maddich of ESPN. Sorry to Dennis Pitter, we ran out of time. Conversation continues 24-7 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Use hashtag BYUSN. For Jerem Jordan, I'm Spencer Linton. Shout out to Rocky Beagle, Coordinator's Corner. Up next on the BYU TV app, Greg Rebell, the voice of the Cougars with Elisa Tuiaki. How about that defense giving up just 19? Why do you have a problem with it? Go Cougars. Why are you yelling at me?